views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. This show's audio was via a Skype call. Welcome to Knowledge Book Radio with Marge Patasic. Marge was searching for the purpose of her life and the truth that would tie everything together to make sense of what was taught and what was happening on our planet, the fire that was creating all the smoke. Through many experiences, she was finally led to the knowledge book that provided all the answers. Marge is now talking about this gift to humanity on Knowledge Book Radio, so all can be united in peace, love, and harmony. This live call-in show at 1-800-930-2819 is amazing. So get ready to hear about the Knowledge Book. Here's your host, Marge Potasek. Hello, everyone. I'm Marge Potasek, and you are listening to Knowledge Book Radio with Marge Potasek on Transformation Talk Radio. And for the next hour, as we've been doing for a while now, we will continue to cover some topics from the Knowledge Book. And this week, we are going to talk about that mysterious topic of karma. What is karma? How does it work? And where does it take us? And as with any word, we have some sense of the meaning of the word, even though despite the fact that um, there was one individual who told me that karma is mysterious, karma is unknowable, it is undecipherable, there is no way that humans can understand it. But at the same time, there are definitions in the dictionary, and according to the Merriam-Webster dictionary, it has the following explanations for karma. Based on Hinduism or Buddhism, karma is the principle of retributive justice, determining a person's state of life and the state of his reincarnations as the effect of his past deeds. Then, according to theosophy, it's the doctrine of, in, of inevitable consequence, also known as destiny or fate. So in Buddhism, it's the sum of a person's actions in one life, which determined his form in the next life. Now, there is a different dictionary, but similar at the same time, from dictionary.com. And this is, karma is the force created by a person's actions that is believed in Hinduism and Buddhism to determine what that person's next life will be like. And another definition is a force created by a person's actions that some people believe causes good or bad things to happen to that person. So again, it is something that a person does, which then consequently causes something else to happen, and that defines, destines that person's next incarnation or their current life. And there is also another secondary definition, and that says karma is a characteristic emanation, aura, or spirit that infuses or vitalizes someone or something. Now, according to my own personal understanding, it is a law of action-reaction, a law of consequence, where every deed has a particular result. As portrayed in the film that was recently um, shown, called The Butterfly Effect, where even an action as slight and light as a butterfly's wings flapping has an effect somewhere on another part of the planet. So there is nothing that is going on that does not affect anything else that is going on. So now we'll go into how the definition of karma is given by the knowledge book. Now, according to the knowledge book, karma is a system of living that defines and prepares an evolution path for us, an evolution scenario. 
It has a very specific ordinance or rule, principle, guideline of how this is accomplished and a stepwise order by which it is accomplished and completed. So another way to look at karma is that it is the actual repetition of the events a human attains by experiencing while living in the world in alignment with the evolution system. It's an unconscious, instinctive impulse to repeat the experiences driven by our sub-awareness. The goal is to learn the lesson, to stamp it on our cellular tape, in which case that event is not experienced again. So to reiterate, according to the knowledge book, karma is a sub-awareness impulse that leads a person to continuously repeat the events from which they have not learned deterrent lessons. In order to become a perfect or genuine human, all karmas must be cleared and therefore all lessons must be learned in order to complete each individual's essence evolution. The chain of karma connects us to the evolution plan. However, the plan is not the cause of the events. The karmas we go through allow us to gradually go up the evolutionary stairs. It is critical to go through with this and go do this so that the awareness potential of a human can enter the evolution ordinance with the essence nucleus. The plan's job is to design our destiny. However, it is karma that completes our evolution. So let's go a little bit deeper into this. Every being is compelled to complete their karma through the events they experience. And this is accomplished instinctively. It's a sub-aware impulse and a cause and effect chain that completes our evolution. In fact, we ourselves don't even realize that this is happening because we go through life performing actions, performing deeds, having thoughts. And in fact, and when something happens to us, when we get stolen from, when we get robbed, when we get lied to, when we get cheated, when someone else takes our job away, when something bad happens to us, we are actually scratching our own heads trying to figure out what has happened, why is this happening to me and not, an, not anybody else. So we ourselves initially are not really aware of what's happening, how it's happening. However, when all these events all especially the bad events that are happening to us makes us think and start to search and find we eventually figure out and we learn through questing through reading through going to teachers through going all these kinds of experiences as to what actually caused what is happening to us now and in order to complete our karmas every event every experience we go through, we go through from its positive side and negative side. And once the lesson is learned, then it is imprinted onto the cellular tape for that life period, and it is not repeated again because the tapes from lifetime to lifetime are permanent. They are not erased. Now, we sometimes, if we notice that the same thing is happening to us over and over again, and if the same situation arises over and over again, it depends. Sometimes it takes us many lifetimes, many experiences in many lifetimes until we actually get the lesson learned. And sometimes it needs to be repeated multiple times over multiple lifetimes before the lesson is learned. And this all depends on how profoundly we experience the event or events. And this in turn dictates how many times over how many lifetimes the event is experienced. And this is how, over lifetimes, a human learns not to become a murderer, not to become a thief, not to cheat, not to lie, and so on and so forth. It is because the human finally reached the single of the deterrent lesson that was then registered on the cellular tape. And a person who, for example, gained, reach it, gained riches excuse me, by stealing, cheating, and lying will pay his debt bitterly in another lifetime. And eventually, by finally learning the deterrent lesson, the event will be registered on the cellular tape 
and consequently that human will not go through that event again and will no longer steal, cheat, or lie again. And gradually, over centuries of lifetimes, each person attains maturity and perfection. And once your karmic debts have been paid, then you are able to connect with the system. And the system, through its particular evolution, ordinance, and order, clears the remaining debris of karma that we still have. So, a side note. Previously, when we mentioned that the councils and totalities of 18 give out certain fascicles on their conscious mission day. And one of the benefits of receiving these fascicles directly from that missionary, from that person who is a member of a council or totality of 18, uh, who is a solar teacher, um, when they get, when they receive this fascicle on the conscious mission day, then should that individual receiving the fascicle have a very heavy karmic debt to pay, then part of that karma is alleviated for that person when they receive those fascicles. So now, over centuries of lifetimes, the human gains perfection and becomes a genuine human. So in short, the human arrives at the level where it respects, loves, honors and is grateful for all that is because it is, for even the blade of grass, even the dirt that we trample on, that we currently view as insignificant and not worth noticing. So the human finally arrives at the level where it loves the created because of the creator and leaves the creator because of the created. So the humans, when they are born to this planet, when we are born into this world, we start from zero frequency, the third evolution dimension. And this is where ego calls the shots. This human's entire drive through ego and fear is to perpetuate itself without consideration of anything or anyone else, at the cost of anything and anyone else, and sometimes to directly harm others in order to enrich itself and to perpetuate itself. And here I need to mention how this particular knowledge about karma sets one free. Let me explain. In the case where someone has done something nasty to us, we don't really don't have to worry. I really don't, or we don't really have to do anything. I mean, there are many stories of people that I've talked to who remember from 10 years before what this person did to them and what that person said to them and how nasty that person was and how bad that person's action was directed to them. And they're still thinking in their thoughts how to get back at that person, how to teach them a lesson that they will never forget. Well, when you know about karma, when you know what the knowledge book says about karma, it doesn't matter. You don't have to do anything. That person themselves eventually will teach themselves that lesson that they need to learn. I don't have to spend my time or we don't have to spend our time trying to figure out ways to get back at people or to teach people lessons or to somehow, you know, trip them up because you lost the job. So now they have to lose a job as well. Um, that's no longer the case. This is where this knowledge that is being given to us sets, at least in my estimation, sets me free. It gives me the freedom to understand that, number one, I don't have to think of any ways, I don't have to do anything to that individual because that individual themselves will teach themselves the lesson, okay? And that person themselves will do a much better job of punishing themselves that I or anyone can ever do. So the result is my non-retaliation is also that I've now not created any karma, new karma for myself. Maybe at some previous lifetime, I did exactly to that individual what that individual did to me. In which case, the fact that that individual did it to me, that purified my karma. However, it created a karma for themselves. So eventually, someone else or some other person who 
they have reciprocal karmic debt between them, they will pay each other off. But I myself, by just accepting the situation that you know I lost my job, that's fine. Now it's time for me to go somewhere else and do something else. In which case, then I am free of the karma I could have incurred, new karma I could have incurred on myself because I'm accepting everything as it is and let go of any kind of retribution that I may give. It is the person themselves that will teach themselves the lesson. Okay, so now it looks like it may be a good time for us to take a short break. And I would like to remind everyone that our website is www dot usa dot the knowledge book all one word dot net and the telephone numbers for questions and topics is nine seven three seven eight seven seven zero three five and the website will also contain information about any talks about the knowledge book that may be held in your area um, or and and of course any kind of um, focal points which you can visit. Okay, so now it is time to go for a break. We'll please stay tuned. We'll be back shortly. Integrate spirituality into your everyday lives on Universe Soul Heart Radio. Tune in each month on Transformation Talk Radio as Kathleen Johnson explores the concept of sensible spirituality, keeping you grounded, connected, and centered on the path to wholeness. Kathleen has dedicated her life to facilitating holistic healing and wholeness in others. Listen to Universe Soul Heart Radio and learn how to flourish, grow, and impact all we do on planet Earth. For more information, go to universesoulheart.net. Stay juicy. Tune in to Your Juicy Love with me, Una Drake co-hosting monthly with Dr. Pat and every second Monday at 12 p.m. on Transformation Talk Radio. My show, Your Juicy Love, helps you find the dynamic, life-affirming love you've always wanted. Transform your relationships and bring peace, joy, and juicy, juicy love to planet Earth. For more information, visit unadrake.com. Amber Teal, founder of The Healthy Edge, is bringing you the hit show, Healthy Edge Radio, living with power, passion, and purpose. Amber provides the support and tools necessary for you to finally release the weight and emotions that are hidden beneath the weight. Tune in each month on Transformation Talk Radio. For more information on how you can take the next step with Amber, visit GetTheHealthyEdge.com. Are you stuck in unhealthy habits, toxic relationships, or low self-esteem? Do you crave a life of inspiration, love, self-acceptance, and fun? Sounds like you're on the verge, on the verge to your next big thing. Join Laura Richer, host of On The Verge Radio, helping you use your breakdown for a breakthrough, overcome life's greatest challenges, and live the life you want and deserve. Tune in each month on Transformation Talk Radio or visit seattlehealinghypnosis.com for more information. Wow. Hey, everyone. Welcome. Uh, Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. This is Talk Radio to Thrive By. I'm telling you, I got to pinch myself some days because when each of us gets called to do something that we so not thought was in our wheelhouse to do for a purpose that's so much greater than us, we get to show up and shine. If you would like to show up and shine on the Dr. Pat Show as a co-host or sponsor, send us an email to inspire at the drpatshow.com. Choose the new earth on the Cornelia Stephanie show. Tune in each week on Transformation Talk Radio as Cornelia takes listeners on an odyssey of higher consciousness to inspire, educate, and empower. Cornelia guides people on the path of self-healing, peace, and liberation. The Cornelia Stephanie Show is your catalyst for anchoring heaven on earth on a global scale. For more information, go to corneliastephanie.com. Hello, we're back um, to Knowledge Book Radio with Marge Batazic, and I am Marge Batazic, and we're doing this on Transformation Talk Radio. 
And as we've been doing before in previous shows, we've been covering different topics from the Knowledge Book or different topics and questions that people have had in relation to the Knowledge Book or in relation to what they don't understand about what's going on around them. And today our particular topic has been the topic of karma. What is karma? How does it work? And where does it take us? So to quickly review, um, karma is a life process. The events we go through in each life are a means of us learning a lesson until we no longer need to learn that lesson because it's been permanently imprinted on our cellular tapes into ourselves and therefore it no longer needs to be repeated. So when you meet an individual um, who doesn't lie, doesn't cheat, doesn't steal, um, is respectful of others, is cooperates with others, then you can tell um, that they have learned those lessons previously through the incarnations that they have uh, undergone through the evolution path that they have traveled and now they are much lighter as far as karma is concerned okay but at the same time when we're thinking about karma it seems as though and then and the definition of karma has both the word fate and destiny um how is that destiny determined do we have a free will do we not have a free will and how is our life plan determined? And who decides all this? So our destiny, our fate, our life plan for each life period is determined by our evolution level, our consciousness level, and our energy and frequency level. Although our essence is the pure spiritual totality that is perfect, we have been undergoing the evolution of our physical energy, or our crude matter form, in order for that form to be the equal of the essence. And the plan of destiny allows us to actually and gradually arrive at our goal, which is becoming a genuine human, where our essence is what we are throughout and not just the center or the heart of our being. And that plan of destiny and fate also depends on where we are as far as opening up the seven facets in our brain. Um, our brain has seven facets, and Gurudev talked about this. And these seven facets do not know about each other. They do not know they exist, and gradually over lifetimes, these seven facets open up to each other, and these facets open up to each other um, through the evolution, through the life that we go through. And step by step, this is how another part of how karma and how evolution is then a um, propellant, a fuel for us to become genuine humans. Now, the seven facets are if I can find them. The seven facets, and they're in fascicle number nine, are intellect, intelligence, awareness, thought, idea, logic, and conscience. So before we come into this planet, we have already predetermined through our previous evolution as to where we arrived at, at the previous evolution, and the level that we are at. And that's exactly the level we start at the next lifetime. So if we're still working on the intellect, then our destiny, our plan of destiny, our evolution plan for ourselves for that lifetime has to do with opening up the intellect. And then gradually that intellect will open up into intelligence. And those two facets may know each other and recognize each other and they merge with each other. And this has all got to do with the awareness that we're going from the isolated single awareness into infinite awareness. And all these facets, the intellect, the intelligence, the awareness, the thought, the idea, the logic, and the conscience are all different aspects of awareness. And eventually when all of them are opened up to each other, through the incarnations that we go through, through the evolution plan that we have for ourselves, then we dive into the infinite awareness, 
in which case at that point we become genuine humans, okay? Now, when we initially attain a human form, and because we live in the world dimension where there is danger and the need to sustain life, our egos are the drivers of our actions. So if we ourselves are a car, the driver behind the steering wheel, as far as our world um, dimension is concerned, would be ego. And this driver, this ego, its entire goal is to preserve and to maintain its own life. And fear becomes also a very important factor because fear is what allows humans to survive by recognizing and avoiding any danger. Um, you, I'm sure that everyone has experienced it themselves or have seen it in some kind of movie or TV or somewhere where a person comes into a room and immediately senses that there's something wrong. This is our instinctive fear recognizing through the antenna that we have, through the instinct that we have, that there may be a danger in that particular place. Or we can also, when we go into a room, automatically check out that there is a bad vibe in this place, that um, something had gone awry, that someone had done something or said something that was not copacetic with the atmosphere and ruined the atmosphere. So this is, this is where our instinct, this is where our fear plays a great role. Now, humans have freedom of thought. And we, because we are we, have this instinctive reaction of going towards the forbidden. Another way of looking at it is that we have this ingrained capacity of causing mischief, while at the same time, we are very powerful and have the ability to transcend dimensions with our man mental capacity. And this combination of ego, fear, attractions towards the forbidden, going where we're not supposed to be going, uh, for, and thought power, that's what made it necessary for humans to undergo evolution. Now, celestial authorities over time devised many plans and systems for the humans to evolve in a gradual manner. And there is a section in the knowledge book um, where it says, initially we did so and so and such and such. When that didn't work, we did so and so and such and such. When that didn't work, we tried this way. When that didn't work, we tried that way. And then when that didn't work, we tried something else again. And eventually over many, 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 many centuries, there finally came a time when there were some beings who actually succeeded in completing their evolution. And those beings who succeeded in completing their evolutions, they devised a new plan, a new system. And this is where these solar friends, like and these beings, like Moses, Muhammad, Jesus Christ, came as prophets and emissaries. And this is through their method, that's how a gradual success is being attained. So the systems that were formed and the evolution that was applied in each system can be depicted by the image of a glass of muddy water and into which clear water is constantly being poured. And as the water is poured into the glass, the mud flows out of the glass and eventually, over time, the water in the glass becomes just as clear as the water that is being poured into it. So over the lifetimes of humans, over the many reincarnations that humans have undergone and are still undergoing, and especially in the last 6,000 years, we have undergone various teaching and educating systems known as the first, second, and third orders of Allah. And in the first order of Allah, this is where the system of meditation came to be. And this was a system of being able to draw down cosmic energies with thought power. Because those cosmic energies are actually the water that purifies us. When those energies come in, when those cosmic energies, light energies come in, they disperse and they, they allow us to 
become more energized to be able to vibrate at a higher frequency level and therefore to evolve. Okay, now the second order of Allah came in and this brought the system of Moses into effect. And this is where we receive the Kabbalah with its guidelines. And in this guideline, fear was actually used as a mechanism to keep humans away from dimensions for which they were not ready. So this is where the devil came in. And this is where these events that happened to us, I don't know about anybody else, any time I decided to do something wrong, I was always caught. Anytime I did something wrong, something would happen to me that would definitely told me that that was wrong. Now, this is not something I planned for myself or anybody planned for me. However, this was this instinctive drive that now I recognize that put me in a position of catching myself and making sure I didn't do that again. So then came the third order of Allah, and this is the one that brought the love frequency uh, through the system of Jesus Christ. And this, to date, was the most successful program, since through this love frequency, it brought peace and happiness to the human. And then, because they were happy, that because they were relaxed, that body, their body then was able to absorb cosmic energies much more readily. And again, it is the cosmic energies that evolve us, that grow us, okay? But, besides love, there is something else that we need to attain. We need to attain consciousness. And in order to attain consciousness, we need knowledge. So Christ came in with love and Muhammad then came in with knowledge with the Quran. And this Quran contains social knowledge, meaning how are we supposed to behave with each other in the world to be respectful and honoring each other and dealing with each other fairly. Okay. And then we were left alone. All the books had been brought in, and I don't know if anybody remembers or uh, has gone looking into history, but I remember headlines where they said, God is dead. He's not talking to us anymore. So this was the period of the 15 centuries where God was not dead, actually. He was still around. He still was watching and helping us, but he was not producing any more books. In other words, every 2,000 years or so, the books were coming in, different books were coming in, different teaching systems were coming in, and each one was include, each one was a foundation for the next book. And then the next book was, that book became the foundation of the next one. And all of those books are actually, their essence frequencies are combined in the knowledge book. And on top of that, there is additional energies and frequencies that the knowledge book gives and the knowledge that the knowledge book gives that no other books prior, prior to this have given. And now we got to the 20th century. And this is where in 1999-2000, that's when the period of religions was closed. And that's when the reincarnation program was also closed. And giving humans a chance 300 cosmic ages, the program of 300, the three cosmic ages was put in place. And these 300 years were allocated to the human to be able to complete their world evolutions through a very accelerated evolution plan. And this accelerated evolution plan was the plan where in the knowledge book, through working with the knowledge book and with the programs of the knowledge book, then we were able to accomplish previously at the beginning of the knowledge book, a thousand years of evolution in a shorter time as one year. And now at this current time frame, we need to accomplish a thousand years of evolution in a minute, in a moment, and eventually it'll be with every breath. What happens at the end of the 300, cos 300 years of, or the three cosmic ages? Anyone who has successfully uh, completed their evolution will, will continue on to the path of light. And then once they have successfully gone through the path of light, they will be able to then go into the evolutions of the unknown dimensions. And these are the dimensions about which we have never known. Nothing was ever told to us about them. This is one of the new knowledge, or one of the new knowledge that is being brought by the knowledge book. 
there are dimensions beyond what we have known and, comp and been habituated to as the Almighty. There are dimensions beyond that, and we'll be going to those dimensions once we have succeeded in paying back all our karmas and evolving to the point of being a genuine human. Now, in each of these systems, depending on each person's evolution, consciousness, and energy level, a specific plan of destiny was in place for that person, and they underwent purification and attaining, and attaining the learned lesson on their cellular tape. Each of the systems come from a specific energy dimension and enable humanity to attain a specific dimension. Those who have gone through the previous teachings in the religious dimension have been enabled to go from zero frequency, third evolution dimension, first solar dimension, to the 15th frequency, 16th solar dimension, and 18th evolution dimension, and that is also the 72nd energy dimension, and this is the point at which we get in contact with the knowledge book. So just in spite of the fact that we all, when we come back to the world, start out at zero frequency, third evolution dimension, through the influences, through the education, through going um, back to a refresher course, back to um, either meditation or church or synagogue or temple or ashram or whatever the modality we are using, we are incorporating those energies um, into ourselves and therefore bringing ourselves up from the third evolution dimension, zero frequency, which is the world dimension, and coming up to the 72nd energy dimension or the 18th evolution dimension, and that is our entry point. That's our ticket into the knowledge book. Now, despite the fact that this is where we need to be, however, if we're maybe at the 71st dimension or 70th energy dimension, the knowledge book will fill in those energies that we are still missing. As we are reading it, as we are working with it, it is also working with us, that it is also reading us. And it sees, oh, Marge needs this, Marge needs that, Marge needs the other. Okay, and it is supplied. And I go through my experiences and allows me to then definitely be at the 72nd. And then the knowledge book, through the programs, through the reading, through the writing, counsel, totality of 18, being a flower, um, having flowers, that allows me to go from the 72nd energy dimension, and everyone allows everyone to go from the 72nd energy dimension, 18th evolution dimension, to the exit dimension, which is the 19th evolution dimension, and 76th energy dimension. Okay, and that would that is our ticket to the Omega dimension, and that's our ticket to the Golden Age and the Path of Light Beyond. And all of us, it is imperative for all of us to get to this level in order for us to exist. Each one of us is in a different dimension and also comes from and is connected to our own dimension, which means that every one of us is undergoing our own particular destiny plan and our own graduated evolution plan within the larger scope of the rest of humanity and of our planet. And the evolution of the human is always accomplished with another human. Now we can go back to this image of the water being poured into the muddy water. So as the water or cosmic energies are poured into us, the glass, then the muddy water overflies and dirties our surrounding. And this muddy water is then the experience that enables another human to go through their evolution and their tests of acceptance, love, tolerance, patience, and all those beautiful qualities. The cause for every action of ours, there is an effect. And that effect then becomes the cause of another effect. And that effect is then the cause of another effect, and so on and so on. If we produce good actions, then we produce good effects. We get the positive side of that event. If we produce 
not so good actions, then we get the negative side of those events, and that becomes eventually a deterrent lesson. Well, I'm not going to go there anymore because that hurts too much. So we come back and eventually learn the lesson and we clear our karma. So there is always a reason for everything that happens. And whatever the reason is, is never far from the cause. And our job is right now to forget about instinct, to forget about fear, to forget about ego. Our job at this point is to use our intellect, logic, and awareness to solve the particular situation that's facing us and therefore coming closer to being able to claim our full potential. And over time, as we learn the lessons, as we pay back our debts, as we become purified through the experiences we go through, we come closer and closer to our essence, to our true selves. Now, what happens, I always am reminded of the show I once saw or the... the um, the displays that were made with dominoes, all kinds of intricate patterns were set up with dominoes. And each domino, of course, was close to the one next to it. And we had, there were circular patterns being formed. There were zigzag patterns being formed. There were like divergent patterns being thrown, uh, formed, divergent streams, convergent streams. In other words, one domino impacted the other one and the one came together. All kinds of patterns are formed. However, it is always the same thing that happens to all of them. Once that one domino is knocked at, once that first domino is knocked over and it's tipped over, then it hits the next domino, and then that domino hits the next domino, hits the next domino, and then all of a sudden, all the dominoes are moving in that pattern. And after we're finished, all the dominoes are flat. But all the activity was started with that first initial push. So <clears throat> this is how our life and our evolution works. The pattern of the dominoes is our plan of destiny. The trigger to topple the first domino is the influences we receive from our environment. And the rest is a cause and effect chain of one domino falling on the next, on the next, and on the next. And eventually, all the dominoes are down, all our lessons are learned, and we have succeeded in purifying ourselves and clearing all the karma we've accumulated in all li our life periods. One may ask, why do I have to go through this? Why can't I just stay where I am? I like it where I am. I have a nice apartment. I can go wherever I want. I have a car. I could do this. I could do the other. Some people say I have a plane. I can go wherever I want in my plane. I have a boat. I could do this. I could do the other. I'm enjoying my life on this planet. I mean, what's wrong with that? Um, planet is beautiful. It's gorgeous. I could go to all these beautiful spots. Why is all that I'm going through necessary? Why do I have to go through all this pain? Why do I have to keep teach myself lessons? And I mean, what's the ultimate result? Why, where does evolution stop? Where does evolution, what are the evolution step causing us to do? Well, there's some good news and some bad news. <laughs> First of all, in simple terms, that's how the universe works. Everything is in the process of metamorph metamorphosis. Everything is changing into something else, into something even more beautiful and more wonderful. We arrived at this particular point in time through billions of centuries of changes where things were separated and combined and recombined and particles of stuff coming out of one particular kind of um, being or dimension or potential and there are other potentials and powers that came into play and things was combined and recombined and separated and combined and we arrived at the universe that we see today. So to lay it out as it is, our evolution is interminable. There is no end to evolution. There will always be another door behind the door you have just opened. Although we'll Although we may see the current world we are living in 
within the solar dimension and galaxies beyond. It is also a living entity. Our world is a living entity and it is undergoing its own evolution. And it underwent evolution to get to the present state and will continue to evolve. However, there is a catch. We, through our negativity, through our propensity towards the negative and causing mischief, we are shortening our planet's lifespan. And we are also shortening our own lifespan through our negativities. And the world can no longer absorb any more of this negativity. And like our planet, like everything, all living and non-living entities are undergoing evolution, a metamorphosis into higher energy forms and going into higher and unknown dimensions. We've gone through a very long evolution process by natural means and the universe has been fed and fed by and functioning based on the energies the human produces. Now there is a new order being introduced and established. Something that we have not known about until today and that is now being disclosed. So we are now at a threshold. We are now at the beginning and at an end. So those beings also have gone through evolution. Those beings, those higher beings, those celestial authorities who have been guiding us, who have been teaching us, who have been holding our hands all along to get us from point A to point B, they also have arrived at that point through a billion century evolution. Now this may be surprising, and it certainly surprised me, the celestial beings who have been guiding us, teaching us all along, they have gone through the same evolution that we are undergoing. And they are celestial beings because they have succeeded in the evolution. They have arrived and they, they are the result of billions of centuries of excuse me, evolution. And the hope for humankind is, well, if they could do it, we could do it. And they are waiting for us. They are waiting for us to be able to join them and together with them in the unknown dimensions, we will be accomplishing different things in different ways than we're accustomed to right now. Now, in order for us to be together with those celestial authorities, in order for us to be at that level, we've got to have a certain report card. We've got to have um, certain characteristics for us to be able to join them. Okay? And this is the characteristics. These are the characteristics that are required. And this is when permission will be given to us to be able to get off this planet and go to other dimensions. So number one characteristic is to accept everything as it is. And most of us want to change what is. Most of us want to tweak it a little. Most of us want to say, well, you know, you gave me, you gave me bread, but I want cake. Or someone else will say, you gave me cake, I'm on a diet, I don't want any bread at all. Just give me vegetables. A lot of us basically do prayers over food. However, with the knowledge book we learn that we accept as it is because it is already perfect because it is already that which was produced and is part of the totality of consciousness of Allah. And therefore, we accept everything as it is without changing it. And now with this karma explanation, we really can see that everything that happens, despite the fact that it looks negative to us, it really is a method for us purifying ourselves and for us to be able to rise up the evolution stairs. So that's number one, to accept everything as it is. Number two, 
to respect all that is created by Allah, especially the human. Now, when we look around, yes, we can see some respect for human and for humans by other humans, but most of the time we are trying to make ourselves feel better, make ourselves more superior and feeling that we are okay by denigrating other humans, by belittling other humans, by ridiculing other humans. So the objective, the goal is to have respect all that is created by Allah, especially the human. Number three, to grasp the consciousness of the divine totality. Meaning, understand how it all works, where and how is the divine totality, what is the function, what actually it is. And this is where the knowledge book comes in to give this information. And the divine orders and the spiritual totality. This is all presented in the knowledge book and we gradually learn to do that. So number three is to grasp the consciousness of the divine totality. Number four. To tread this path always with the consciousness of intellect, logic, and awareness. Now, I don't know about anybody else, but sometimes this is pretty difficult to do. We're accustomed to having um, our feelings guide us, having our um, inner radar system guide us, which, but our inner radar system basically guides us through ego, based on ego. So we need to use intellect, logic, and awareness. And this is the way to go. Um, number five, to reach the consciousness of the unity of Allah. To know that we are all united, we are all one, we are all brothers and sisters. Number six, to not step outside of his universal program. The path has been designed. The way to get from A to B is laid out. We need to follow that path if we so choose, if we want to do things easily, quickly, and safely. Okay? We could do it the hard way or we could use it, do it the easy way. Number seven, to take the missions performed into effect, not in the medium of love, but in the medium of intellect. So I think we will cover this later in another show in terms of love and intellect, how this is all accomplished, and where we how we make a decision on what to do. Number eight, to see everyone with the eyes of Allah, not with their own eyes. Meaning, seeing everyone with our essence, because our essence is Allah, and the essence sees the other essence. It does not see the outside, it sees the inside. It sees the spark of Allah, the spark of God that everyone is and has. Okay, and number nine, to accept the consciousness of the unity of Allah and the singleness of the universe as life. Meaning we're all intertwined, we're all this mass that is unified, that is united, that we're part of a whole and we're not separated from a whole. Um, and we are all together in this and we're proceeding in life to produce even greater stuff on this evolution path. Number 10, to transcend the energy walls by being a neutral consciousness. <sighs> now, a neutral consciousness is the consciousness that Allah has. We still have positive and negative. Um, so we need to be able to get to that level of energy, that level of frequency, that level of consciousness to be a neutral consciousness. Now, once anyone has integrated with the above qualities, they then are no longer a human of the world. They are no longer in the third dimension. They are no longer at zero frequency. Because at this level of knowledge, at this level of consciousness, they become direct missionaries of the system. If we are not integrated with any of the ten points just covered, that means we still have some deficiencies and some flaws and these need to be removed and will be removed and remedied through the program of karma and attaining through experience. Everything we go through, all the unhappiness and distresses are due to each of the consciousness to reach, actually to reach the consciousness of unity. So everything we're going through 
is a method for us to arrive at the consciousness of unity, to be at the dimension of Allah, and be able to succeed in what we had set out to do. And it looks like this is all the time we have this week. Um, and just to remind you, we do have the three chapters still available for people who would like to get the three chapters from the knowledge book. Um, and you can email your questions or text your questions. My email is mmjp99 at gmail.com. That's Mary Mary John Peter 99 at gmail.com. Telephone number is 973-787-7035. We look forward to receiving those questions and those topics because it helps tremendously in preparing this show. And um, then it just feels like I'm addressing actual people. Um, okay, if we, if you have any questions or karma, we could cover them next week. Um, and please join me every Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific time on the Knowledge Book Radio with March Potasik. And again, should you like to know more information about the Knowledge Book, we do schedule conferences anywhere in the United States. We could come to your city and give you the basics, the rudimentary basics of the knowledge book, and you have a chance to ask questions, we could apply, okay? So now, humanity's verdict is in humanity's hands. And as the knowledge book states, and Mrs. Chirac frequently reminds us, you are the ones who will save the world. Thank you. We will see you next week. Take care. You've been listening to Knowledge Book Radio with Marge Potasek. Marge was led to the Knowledge Book, a gift to humanity, and its time of transition to the Golden Age. that provided the truth and energies and frequencies. Now, she shares information from and answers questions about the Knowledge Book with you each Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. For more information, visit Marge at usa.thenowledgebook.net.